Good morning YouTubers. Here we are today on the bridge over the River Tay at Dunkeld. This bridge was built by General Wade back in the mid 1700s. Uh, I'm here on a ancestral memory tour with my wife Renata and uh, I'll just pan around to see the majesty of the River Tay. There's a fair bit of mist over the Tay today. We're looking south where the Tay flows to Dundee and now we're panning back having a look at the town of Dunkel, the Athol Arms Hotel, famous hotel there and now we're looking to the northern aspect and behind that stand of trees in the center of the frame now lies Dunkeld Cathedral. Now this plaque says in fact that the bridge was designed by Thomas Telford so that comes sometime after General Wade but I'm sure there was a bridge over it in the time of General Wade. This is the town square of Dunkeld with the Perth Arms Hotel on one side scanning round and looking at the ancient monument in the centre of the square and just kicking over the tops of those houses there is Dunkeld Cathedral and Renata. This memorial fountain in the town square in Dunkeld was installed here in 1866 by the Duke of Athol. Duke of Athol living at Blair Athol Castle. This is Dunkeld Cathedral. Uh, there's been a cathedral at this site since medieval times. Uh, also included a monastery. It was a very important site. Uh, there being an Episcopal seat here. You can see clearly here that the northern portion of the cathedral with its flying buttresses and its cloisters is now in ruins but the adjoining southern portion is actually still used for church services and is in good condition. Behind me is the church of Little Dunkeld. There's been a, a church on this site for many, many hundred years, but the main church is actually the uh, cathedral, which is about half a mile north of here, up the Tay. Uh, there are lots of uh, Duffs and Macduffs buried in this churchyard. I'll just pan around and we'll have a look. Uh, and I'll take some more shots in a minute or two. And here's the gravestone of John Duff, the ground officer of Grand Tully Estate, uh, and his wife Margaret McIntosh, the McIntoshes and Duff's uh, intimately associated. Uh, I'll just pan and look at the church. We've just hiked up this uh, minor road in the Strathbran Valley and we're headed up towards Rumbling Bridge. We'll just scan. These are the hills to the north of the River Bran. There's Renata in the distance and there is uh, Victorian baronial style tower house there looking over the Bran Valley. Now we stop uh, for another photo opportunity here looking down the Strathbran Valley with the sun shining brightly. Only another couple of hours of sunshine here in the Scottish winter. This scenic spot is looking down on Rumbling Bridge. Rumbling Bridge is a cascade where the River Bran goes under the bridge and down towards Dunkeld. In the distance there, sunshine on Rumbling Bridge. And here on this sunny winter's day it's quite clear why they call this Rumbling Bridge. You can here the River Bran rumbling 
there's the bridge the distant dim winter sun and the river Bran cascading down into the abyss here this is the Laganalachy churchyard here the burial place of the Macduffs in the Strathbran Valley now, this was originally a Gaelic speaking area and there's a famous tale that the Church of Scotland appointed an English speaking minister and the congregation were so upset that they actually stoned him and drove him out of the valley and so that was the end of English speaking in this area up until probably the 1850s. My ancestors probably arrived in the Strathbran Valley from the Kingdom of Fife around 1150. Now here's a map that shows Strathbran dwellings occupied by the family between 1500 and 1945. On the top right corner you can see Laganalachy, then Ballinleek and Ballinloan. Also Trochry, where the king used to have a hunting seat and Tomnagairn and Tomnagrew, north of the river where there is now Quad Bike Centre. Then finally Meikle and Little Fandowie, south of the River Bran. There are the remains of a stone built church here in the centre of the churchyard but uh, it lost its roof a considerable time ago, possibly a hundred years ago and so all that remains is the the wall. Earlier on there was a, a wooden church on this site. It's not a particularly big site but it accommodated the needs of the locals of the Strathbran Valley. In the predecessor of this cottage here on this site here at Laga Nalachy, uh, the ancestor of John Duff of Hamilton in Canada was born. Uh, John matches my DNA precisely, so clearly my ancestry is uh, from this particular spot as well. And in this corner uh, there are a couple of Duffs buried and then over in the further distance there are several more and of course very many more in unmarked graves on this site because only the very well off could afford to have a grave marker. This marker here commemorates Alexander Macduff of Ballin Leek, the adjacent farm property that Macduff's lived in. Uh, this gentleman is the ancestor of uh, Alistair Macduff of Vancouver and also Alistair Macduff. QC, a well-known uh, member of the legal profession in England. In the late 1880s, uh, a member of the Church of Scotland was compiling a list of standing stones and Neolithic monuments in this area when he came upon an elderly gentleman named Macduff who was burying one of his teeth that had fallen out and uh, he questioned the gentleman on uh, what happened in this area and uh, he told him that this was the traditional burial place of the Duffs and Macduffs and in fact there are two properties uh, Meikle and Little Fandowie here and Fandowie is Gaelic for burial place of the Macduffs. So this is the cottage of Balin Leek as seen in that earlier gravestone Alexander Macduff lived at this location. It's just a small, small croft and uh, an additional extension has been put on the end of it. It lies on the little road to the north of the main road in the Strathbran Valley. And we're just about running out of light here in this beautiful winter's day. Here behind me in this crepuscular light is the sign for the farm of Ballin Loan. Ballin Loan and the Fendowie Estates were both possibly combined at one point. 
and were owned by the Duff and Macduff family in times gone by. Good morning YouTubers, today we're heading down to the Hermitage and to Dunkeld to the archives. Uh, we're following a path uh, down from Strathbran and this is the sort of terrain that we're surrounded by on this beautiful January morning. Just panning around the Strathbran Valley. This is the small high road to Ballinlone and Ballinleek looking towards Laganalachie. Mountains in the distance and the Strathbran, the actual river Bran down there in the valley. This part of the uh, Strathbran Valley was almost certainly glaciated, heavily glaciated, and evidence of that can be found here in this massive rock that's been deposited by the glacier. And you can see it consists of uh, three parts, two lower parts, and on top uh, of the two lower rocks, balanced on top of a crack, is uh, another rock. I will just pan up and we'll see up above us in true Outlander style a wonderful mountain outcrop there. We're now in the Tay Regional Forest uh, at a spot called the Hermitage. The Hermitage was conceived in the mid 1700s, the period of the Scottish Enlightenment, uh, a period where people were obsessed with romantic poetry and romantic notion, notions and uh, Ossian, the legendary Scottish poet, uh, was one of these and this is reputedly Ossian's cave here at the Hermitage and we're right next to the River Bran which we'll look at in a moment. So here we are in the main part of the Hermitage. Up above is the Tourist Observation Centre which is currently closed. I'm standing on a bridge which vaults over the cascade where the Bran plummets down below. Over on the other side We've got some forest. And on the other side of the bridge, the Bran is flowing much more calmly towards Dunkeld, where it meets the Tay. Now this building here was once the schoolhouse in Strathbran, the only schoolhouse erected in the 1700s, early 1700s, by the Society for the Propagation of Christian Knowledge, which was a branch of the Free Church. And my ancestor Alexander Duff, or Alexander Macduff, attended this school. And it was here that he learnt uh, English, grammar, uh, a bit of history, possibly some Latin, uh, and uh, mathematics. So he was skilled in the essentials that would provide uh, great use to him when he went south to the industrial areas when the Industrial Revolution kicked off. Now this is the track to Mikkelfendau across the River Bran. There were lots of Duffs and Macduffs lived at uh, the two Fandawis. Uh, the two Fandawis were also associated with the Ballin Loan property. So here we are, journey's end for today at Sheehan Bed and Breakfast at Trochry in the Strathbran Valley. And there's the sign there. Good night. <laughs> Good night.